I wanted to do something a little different today. I want to start talking more about directors, not just films themselves and reviewing them, but analyzing filmmakers that are beloved, that are hated, just to see what I feel, see what's been left in the zeitgeist by them. And I wanted to start with a very, very controversial topic. If you've seen the title of the video, you know the question. Is Christopher Nolan overrated? Yes! That's the plain and simple answer. Christopher Nolan is overrated, but don't start disliking, don't start typing your angry comments. Let me explain. Christopher Nolan is overrated in the sense that he is not the god and savior of cinema. As much as his films make money, he has unfortunately not been able to change the spectrum of the cinematic spectrum. He's not been able to uh, make more uh, practical effects focused movies popular. It's... He is... A he is also not a godlike creature that makes absolutely perfect, immaculate films. That's just excessively. He's also not this godlike figure that makes masterpiece after masterpiece, these untouchable pieces of cinema that everyone loves. He's not like that, or at least for me, of course, this is an opinion-based video. But, I, while Christopher Nolan is definitely overrated, I think Christopher Nolan is also overhated. And I've been seeing that a lot recently. We got Tenet coming out in a couple of days, at least in Europe. Thankfully, I'm lucky enough to go watch it, and the review will definitely come out. But I've seen so much hate and heard so much hate, not just this year, but in the past few years as well. You got first all those people hailing Nolan as this masterful director who only makes great hits one after another, the, some of the best films of all time, which is always a bold-ass statement to make. But then you have those other people, which are usually, and if you know me personally, I'm sorry if you feel like I'm talking about you, even though probably I am, but it's nothing personal. But Jesus, there's some very snobbish cinephiles who love to shit on his filmography. And some of the complaints are rightful, they are well explained, well filled out, for sure. But other times they come off as childish, they come off as very lame, um, and very disrespectful. That's always something I really hate to see when talking about filmmakers, the lack of respect for most of them. It's, it's a pain of a job to do. And Christopher Nolan, I think he's a brilliant director. And not in a top 10 best directors ever, or probably he's one of the best, he's definitely one of the best directors working today, at least in the mainstream spectrum. Uh, there's no denying that he makes some very big and bold spectacle films. I've been re-watching most of them recently, and, and even watching, for instance, Following and Insomnia, which I hadn't seen before a couple days ago. But just the, the level of thought that goes into something like Inception, not so much in the story itself, but actually making it work, with the editing, with all the performances, with the visuals, that's incredible. And delivering a genuine spectacle to it all, to have great action scenes one after the other, keeping the tension going, that's nothing short of masterful. If you dislike the film, that's perfectly fine. But just saying it's a badly made film, that blows my mind. And I've heard people say that Dunkirk is a horrible film, borderline unwatchable. I, I struggle to see someone who says they love cinema watch something like Dunkirk and hate it. You can dislike it, you can, you can dislike the less personal approach, that was my main problem with the film, even though I really did enjoy it. Uh, I, didn't, I wasn't too big a fan of the choice of uh, not giving that much personality to the characters, not knowing who they are, which is exactly what he wanted to do, so bravo for that. He didn't want to make a conventional war film with excessive exposition, which is always his main problem in films, just so much fucking exposition. 
But in this film, he made kind of a hard house experimental war action thriller, and it worked! And, and, and it's incredible just how much practical effects are used, all of the actual using Spitfire planes and, and boats in the ocean and all those explosions and that many extras. It's insane! And seeing people, cinephiles, who are supposed to love cinema, who doesn't mean to love everything that comes out, just watch it and shit on it. It hurts me, it really does. That's a lack of respect for the work of a filmmaker. But then again, you have people who also watch Memento, and that's usually kind of the cinephile favorite because it's the smaller film, it's one of the earlier ones, so it's not still corrupted by the studio system. And controversially enough, I think Memento is just fine. Um, I did watch it, I did enjoy it, I think it's very well put together and all, but it doesn't... It doesn't keep me as engaged as some of his other work. Um, and uh, probably going in already knowing all the twists from years of people just endless talking about it online didn't help. That's on me though, can't really fault the film for that. But still, Memento is a perfectly fine film. I don't think it's nowhere near his best work. Um, though it's co highly commendable for a sophomore feature, feature especially considering that following was a bit lame. <laughs> it's a debut, you know, made with 7,000 pounds, 5,000 pounds, whatever it was, and he made it work, so bravo for him. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever be able to make a film with that little money, probably by not paying anyone, that could work, <laughs> but uh, he did it, and I cannot fault him for that, and that already shows great uh, sense of direction, great resilience in the face of adversities, so that's commendable, and then you get films like Interstellar, oh jeez, people really love Interstellar. I I consider Interstellar to be one of the better big budget spectacle sci-fi films we got the past decade, which was just flooded with them, we got at least one big sci-fi film every year. Uh, it's one of the better ones, it is no arrival, because it's just so hokey with its emotional aspects, and it's no Blade Runner 2049, which both directed by Villeneuve. Um, because he definitely he has so much exposition and so much people talking and explaining what was happening. The whole power of the emotional climax was just taken away entirely from me by having to explain what was going on with the moving back and forth in time and him conveniently talking to the AI. That's just... we don't need that. Chris, my boy. We don't need all that exposition, we get it, and if we don't get it, that's maybe even better because we're actually trying to think and understand what's happening. One of the main problems when I first saw Inception 10 years ago in the cinemas was that so many people were talking about how incomprehensible and hard to follow it is. I, re I saw it back then and didn't have a problem, I rewatched it yesterday, and I'm just like, that's... they explain everything! Outside of the final shot, which leaves some ambiguity, but even then there's some finality in the narrative. And he actually wanted there to be finality. It's just weird considering how he really is playing with audience members with that final shot. But even then, they keep explaining what's going on. All the different layers, you can tell each of them apart. It's not like you're confused by what's happening. Um, the whole mall backstory with the dead wife, that's completely explained. There's very not there's very little subtlety in the film, so that's definitely a fault or a flaw, and I cannot cannot ignore it. It's there, but there's also so much genuine emotion, emotions that are pretty much present in all of his films. Scenes like Rachel dying in the Dark Knight and the ending of the film that always gets to me. Um, Dark Knight Rises again, heavily flawed film narratively speaking, but with a lot of emotional catharsis, trying to reach a peak in a trilogy that it works, it works, it's, a, not, it's not even a mess, but it's just beautiful to look at, and it works, it's effective. Same with Interstellar, as much as I'm not a big fan of the film, the whole middle portion, when just so much time has passed, and he and the other crew members are seeing how much people on Earth have changed and grown old, that's heartbreaking, even if you're not enjoying the film, going through that moment, and completely I'm not accepting it and finding it 
to be hokey, which some of the other parts are the whole love da monologue by Anne Hathaway, it's a bit cringy, even though I don't want it to be because I love those earnest emotions. But just, it's... Ah, I could go on endlessly about Christopher Nolan's Insomnia. Insomnia is considered almost generic, if you exclude following, it's considered its weakest film. I do prefer it to some of them. I prefer Insomnia to, um, to Interstellar. I prefer it to Memento because I think he managed to do something that's very hard, which is a foreign remake, streamlining it for a Western audience. And he made it work, and he got some great performances by Pacino and Williams and even Hilary Swank. And, and, and it's a tense film, and it's very compelling, and the use of sound design, and the visuals, and this cold place where it's always sunny in Alaska, it's, it works. And that's what I wanted to talk about with this, and that's why I wanted to kind of bring this rambling to a close. Is Christopher Nolan overrated? Yes, Christopher Nolan is not the perfect director, he's not one of the 10 best directors of all time. Definitely his films, if, if we were to have a proper, not that shitty as IMDb 250 list, but if we were to talk about like the greatest films of all time, um, I would say probably... I don't even know, probably the Inception of Dark Knight should be on there. Uh, the rest can easily be uh, left on their own, it's not a problem. But everything else, it's just like... It, it, it's, it's not a horrible filmmaker, that's the thing. He's overrated in the sense that he hasn't, he, he hasn't changed the spectrum of cinema, like some people say, but he kind of did with the superhero genres. I do think to a fault, because even rewatching Batman Begins, there's so much comic bookness to it all, even if it is more serious and more grounded, it still feels like a comic book movie, whilst other people have tried to make them way too dark and grim. Um, again, I do enjoy some of them, I do like Zack Snyder, I'm not a fanboy or anything, but I mean, Watchmen is a good film. <laughs> but then on the other spectrum, I've even people completely shit on him constantly for some of the dumbest things, like the whole um, kid bumping his head and dying in Dunkirk, like, why do people... I heard someone ramble about that shit, I'm not joking, for half an hour. And he was so focused on that one instance in the entire film that it completely ruined the experience for, for him. And if that's... like, if he was honest, he wasn't exaggerating, that's fine. But also, don't be that kind of person. Learn to enjoy things more, but also be more critical of it. You can watch Christopher Nolan films and say that they're very well made, that they're even great films, because, let's be honest, most of them are, and he's deserving of that credit. Let's also not be complete assholes when watching them and judging them simply because he's popular with the mainstream. Don't be that kind of person. But also accept that there might be flaws, and it is perfectly fine to say what those flaws are, to point them out. You can watch a film, you can say, there do be problems, and you can also say, I kind of don't care. I recognize them, I accept them, I enjoy the film, and then I move on. And that's what we should strive to be when we're watching films, and especially when Tenet comes out. Already the first reviews have been shed upon a lot, but all I'm saying is, watch the film, trying to have fun, enjoy the film, respect all the freaking effort you put into making it, because just from the 10 seconds that I've seen of the entire trailer, that's already blowing my mind. I don't know how he did it. It's a, a, an achievement in itself. But even then, I'm expecting so much exposition that's probably going to uh, take away some of the enjoyment. But don't be assholes, please. Christopher Nolan is overrated, but he's also overhated. He's a great director. Is not perfect. Is not terrible. But still, that's just my opinion. A long rambling opinion, and I cannot even see how long I've been talking for, but it feels like forever. But still, guys, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, 
that's honestly perfectly fine either way. Let's not kill each other in the comments. I want to have a civil conversation with you guys. Tell me what you like about Nolan, what you dislike about Nolan. Is it your favorite filmmaker or one of them? Do you completely hate him? Uh, do you hate the kid bumping his head in Dunkirk? Please let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to engage in some very mature conversations, hopefully. But still, guys, thanks as always for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.